I have really been enjoying going into the picture section since getting a booth and bingo right here score over here turning the corner look at this art pottery piece $2.99. This looks like it could be vintage. That is a definite yes. It has some gold um, detail on it. I'm going to have to look more into that. And then right here, this store just keeps giving. This is a little pottery Ikebana. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, aka Lilyworks. And if you are new here, welcome. Thanks so much for watching. But in this video, we are going to be doing a thrift with me. I'm showing you some of these pieces that I showed at the end of the last video. You guys saw that I got this um, Hager vase for $9.99. I'm putting a lot of these pieces into my antique booth. I also sell a lot online. I have platform multiple platforms, including eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, but the newest one is I have a an antiques and collectibles store marketplace, and you guys are welcome to join as sellers and buyers um, called Lilyworks Antiques and Collectibles. So I've been um, on the hunt to find pieces to put there as well. You guys also saw these in the last video. Um, the reason I am not doing my regular intro is because I broke out in a massive uh, face rash, probably um, due to stress and some kind of dermatitis thing. So I just decided to forego the intro. So we're just going to be talking about a few of these pieces that I find. Um, like I said, this portion you had seen at the end of the last video. So if you haven't seen part one, uh, I already found some great vintage pieces. This is part two. You guys are going to be so, um, I guess, entertained. <laughs> is that the right word? So amazed at these awesome finds. So this piece right here is a little Nippon piece. I thought this was super sweet, very uh, shabby, chic decor, cottage core. All right, here we go. Pan American Exposition, Expedition, something. Um, but this, I looked this up. I have no experience with um, ephemera and like paper and stuff. But I'm going to put up on the screen what comps I found. It was like 1901 or something like that. Um, here's a vintage suitcase that they hear for $5.99. Has the keys. I know some people do really well with vintage suitcases. Not my niche. And then I found more like books. So Polaris, which I think is a Wisconsin business more vintage um, magazines, which I kind of just want to get and look through. I probably should go back and get those because now that I'm like looking at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to see the decor, things like that. Here we go. Um, I was a avid knitter at one time. I've even dro um, used drop spindles to spin my own yarn. So this was very tempting. It was $199, but you guys know that some of these pieces can go for a lot. Here we have the vintage Norita Noritake set. This is Tree in the Meadows, and those can go for a lot. We have a vase. Um, the reason I didn't pick up Tree in the Meadows is because they had them priced pretty high at this thrift store. Really pretty though, and those are pieces to be on the lookout for. Hats, I actually always find some pretty decent vintage hats here at this thrift store. So I got a Brighton, like tweed looking hat. Um, and then here are some little wallets and little purses. I prefer to um, sell small purses, small wallets, especially if I'm putting it online. It's just easy to store, easy to ship, easy to list. So I'm usually looking, oh, 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 look at this. Okay, this is where I spotted this awesome, very, like, hammered, brutalist, uh, brass. It's a real stone cabochon there. So I was like, is this 1970s, 1980s? But whatever it is, it is fantastic for only $5. I couldn't find a, a mark on there, but it did not matter. 
It was amazing. And as you guys might have seen, my cart is filling up so fast with all the things I found part one. Now we're at part two. And you guys, I got um, like two carts full <laughs> of stuff and it was just really, really great. So um, I haven't even made it out of this little section in the store. This is a little area at the front where they put their purses, but also like curated vintage stuff. So that's what I was able to find so many good pieces right off the bat here is a here is a purse that looks possibly vintage I usually look for made in USA made in Hong Kong um, or maybe silk lined maybe a Whiting and Davis um, or something that would stand out if I were to put it online I have never heard of this brand MC no idea what that is but it is genuine leather That is fake leather all day, hippie, <laughs> faux leather, this like fully beaded purse right here. I really love those, but this one says made in China, um, so I passed on that. Most likely not super vintage. A lot of these purses are pretty outdated and not in the um, exciting vintage <laughs> Um, outdated I guess and then here's another one with if this one was plastic or acrylic some people might call it lucite because the faux stone is um, acrylic but a little bit see-through um, so lucite would be a great keyword to use if you are using a title online if you find um, buttons and things made out of lucite here we go here is a like retro um, I think an eel skin purse? No, snake skin. Snake skin, possibly eel skin. This is by Andre. We find a lot of vintage purses by Andre. Um, I decided to leave that one behind. It was a little bit more pricey. And then um, that one has a, had a little fleur de lis on it. All right, moving on to the hats. And then I found this hat right here, which also looks like a Greek. Um, denim hat, but it totally reminded me of my mom. So I'm going to ask her if she wants it. Then we have more hats up there. I'm really close to the jewelry here, um, but you guys are going to be able to see the whole jewelry portion on my um, other channel, which is Lily Works Jewels and Lots. That, if you're not already subscribed to that channel, that is my original channel that I have. And look at this. This is so pretty. Fully beaded clutch. This one was $4.99. It's really pretty. Be perfect for a wedding, but um, I think it was made in China, so I didn't grab that one. And moving on, we're in the regular section of the thrift store. This thrift store is St. Vincent de Paul. So I'm looking through... Uh, if anything catches my eye, I'm usually looking for collector's pieces for my eBay or online stores and then possibly like things that fit my antique booth aesthetic and things that could be seen as more like gifty type stuff for people who are just out and about having a good time shopping with their friends and um, see something that they might like or fit their home decor style. This is a probably a student piece more like primitive, primitive, rustic uh, pottery vase. We have an, an onion tile trivet, only 99 cents. I was like, yes, we need the, we need the onion trivet. And what is this? Oh, more pottery. Again, that is like a student piece. DJ maybe? Next aisle. Ooh, look at that. Look at what I see right there. All right, so I'm wondering, is that a crack? Is that part of the piece? Okay, so it looks like it's part of the piece. Like, it is meant to look like that. Um, it did have, like, a mark on the bottom. I am very much unsure of this. This was $8.99, and I decided I'm going to look at it more when I get to the other side. But in the meantime, I found this little, like, trinket dish made in the Philippines I believe or no made in Portugal and that was sweet that would be perfect for the antique booth for someone who's just looking for 
um, something like that. We have the ruby red glass. A lot of ruby red glass um, is Avon, but I'm not really up to par, up to speed with different um, glass makers quite yet. So um, I just... I just usually steer clear of it unless it's really elegant, like cut, cut to clear. This one is really pu beautiful. It it has like hand painted butterfly scene on there, possibly bamboo. Um, so a lot of people are really attracted to like butterfly decor. So I decided to grab this. Oh, oh, this one. Um, this one was just a party light, but the frosted card face reminded me of Lalique. Um, obviously, it was not Lalique, but thought I would point that out. Look at this little tiny um, handmade glass. Pour oh, oh, look at this. Okay, so... Um, most likely made in China. I did Google Lens these and a lot of people are putting Murano. I'm very certain that this is not Murano. I believe it's probably China, but it's a, it's a really nice, um, paperweight that I'm going to put in the booth. And then that did have a little bit of a rough edge, so I left that there. like a flashed iridescence here. Pretty. All right, we are at the other side. And then what is this? This is a pottery piece. What could it hold? There was like a little hole in the top. So I'm like, is it for honey? It seems like a big honey jar. I'm not sure, but it was really nice. Studio pottery for sure. This one um, looked vintage. Let me know if I missed anything. You guys definitely uh, let me know some of the pieces I missed in the last video. So that's very helpful. We are always learning, learning from each other. Like I said, I am fairly new to hard goods and selling hard goods. So I am learning right along with most of you and some of you guys are already experts. And then this is such a pretty silver lined creamer and sugar, but look behind it. Oh, look at this. These, you guys, these are Florentine wood um, coasters. So if you guys don't know or have the look of Florentine engraved into your brain, make sure you do that. It is like a light wood made in Italy and there are a lot of collectors, including myself. I love decorating with Florentine wood and those are some red coasters. They can go for quite a bit. Um, they have boxes and furniture. It's a little cute little handmade like tin <laughs> mouse trap thing, but I'm like, I don't even know. Uh, someone might like it. I, I, that's, that's something. Okay, this is so cute. I'm always super drawn to the white and blue chinoiserie style. I, I almost am looking at it right now and I want to go back just for that piece because I don't think I grabbed that. Now I'm like, oh, that's so cute. I love it. And then again, you guys, this thrift store is not by a lot of high traffic. So I would imagine that if I went back to this thrift store, a lot of these pieces would still be there. Um, so I saw this mushroom plate and then I quickly realized that there, at each corner, there was a tomato plate, a pepper plate. Okay, this, this you guys, it's a Fitz and Floyd. So I, I'm like, oh my gosh, this um, stuff inside of it was extra, but yeah, you'll see. You'll see um, coming up. So I did take a, another look at that pottery. I did decide to leave it. I wasn't quite sure about that big pottery piece, but I don't know. I can learn more about it, I guess. This 
almost look like pulled glass, but it's not. And then look, look what I spot. Oh my goodness. The biggest duck, the, the uh, Tanala duck, and it's $24.99 and he did have a little chippy on the beak, so I left him, but oh my gosh. I think that I would have been able to sell them for $25 in my booth. So this store, unfortunately, doesn't do half off, um, I don't think ever, maybe like a senior citizen discount, but they don't do color of the day or anything like that. So I guess that's the price it's going to be at. So unfortunately, that's just with a chip in its beak, I wasn't going to grab it. What does this say? It says Germany. Hmm, I did look this up and it wasn't going for a ton, so it's $3.99. And then we have a little pottery, I don't know, is this like a little um, goblet, hand-painted, um, like terracotta or pottery, $1.99. Super sweet. If there were two, I would grab it because that is just so sweet. Little tiny goblets. Oh, reminds me of Princess Bride. <laughs> like explaining which goblet the poison's in and which one is not. Uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up for this video if you if you absolutely love the Princess Bride and love that scene. Turning the corner, what do we see? Oh, we see so many goodies. And right here, this does look mid-century to me, like a mid-century pottery piece with the gold lines, the red. It's a little irregular. I, I just popped it in my cart. I don't even know what it is, but it has to be something really neat. And then right here, look, an Ikebana pottery um, vase. So two scores right away, right on this end cap here. I was so excited. Um, and if you don't know what an... Ikebana vases. It's like an interesting shaped vase where you can actually just put flowers and arrange it in those little needles. So that was really interesting. Um, I've sold them several times before in the past and it's always fun to find. I actually think that I had gifted an Ikebana vase to one of my teacher friends because um, she teaches flower arranging to her students. So I thought that would be fun for them to do or even with her own kids. I do like this. This looks like a Polish pottery piece. What does it say? Approved. Something approved. I can... Oh, souvenir? Something? Maybe it's German? I'm not sure, but it was sure dirty. So, and it had this going on. So, I left it. Have a rocking horse carousel. $9.99. And it's funny because I'm actually on the other side where I just, I was just on the other side and I'm like reaching across like I didn't see any of these pieces before. <laughs> but um, you can tell that the ladies who take care of the store really um, put a lot of work and effort into making sure that there's good pieces. They're not really stacked up on top of each other. Um, they're easily displayed and easy to see. So I really appreciate that. What is this? I could not figure out what this was. It felt like stone. I have no idea. And then we have this like really old pig. Karen something. I'm sure that's probably worth millions, but <laughs> I left it there. You guys know some signed like folk art crafty pieces from like the 80s sometimes can just 
go for a lot. And then we have this piece that caught my attention. It says hand painted. Uh, I'll put up some comps on the screen, but I did find um, that to be a piece I wanted to pick up for $2.99. I might put it on in the booth. That's a really pretty um, display piece. More, uh, more like rustic pottery, primitive pottery. And then there's the duck. So sad. <laughs> and then what is this? I was like, what in the world? Boston Warehouse Trading Corp. Um, yeah, no idea. What would you put in there? Okay, so this, oh, my mom has this picture. So love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, love does not boast, love is not proud, love is not rude, love always trusts, love always hopes, love never fails. Um, so I was just like, that is so sweet. My mom still has that on her wall. So I wanted to take a little video of that one. And then I've actually been doing really well in like the pictures um, and frame section. This is so funny. It says, John the Barber says, the best part of being bald is being able to hear the snowflakes falling on your head or something like that. The snowflakes falling. I was like, okay, that's kitsch and interesting. We are going to put that in the booth. That might remind some like wife or something to give her husband a gift for his birthday or just a really funny gift. Have this like hand painted piece but again I think it was like a student work um it was like puffy paint and bingo oh my gosh I am absolutely in love with this wall clock it is mirrored it is etched it is um kind of like that Florentine look it was $30 I don't care this is absolutely the style of that I like in my house, in my booth, all the things. So definitely grabbed that one. I think I priced it at $80 in the in my booth. And I honestly think that that's still a good deal. Like that, you don't see clocks like that now. And if you do, they are just so expensive. So here is a stained glass um, wall art or window art piece. I usually like to find them when they are signed. This one was not... I put it in my cart, but I did end up putting it back. So you guys saw the Fitz and Floyd piece down at the bottom. I ended up putting that piece back as well. And then that little needlepoint chair. I loved that. They actually have some really good retro furniture here, vintage furniture. This is just a print, I believe, but I absolutely loved it. Like, look at this sweet girl with her mom. And there was like no mark or anything like that, but... Um, yeah, I mean, it's like one of those pieces where it could go so well on a gallery wall and it just is so sweet. I absolutely love this. And then we have more art that's similar, but then we have another gold frame mirror, which I love again. And again, it's a little bit newer, but, um, people who are sh antique shopping really are drawn to that look as well. I know I am, so you know, you make the exception. And then you guys look, here are more books. Like I said, I've been finding these Reader's Digest books and I'm drawn to them because the covers are just so beautiful. I think they told me that these were $1.99 each. So that was a little bit more than I wanted to spend on these, maybe a dollar, but um, really pretty. And so funny that the, this is the third time, like within a week that I've seen the Reader's Digest. Okay, here we are grabbing another cart because my cart is so full. And yeah, the store just keeps giving. And then I'm like, oh, did you guys bring over a new cart? And they did. And so, of course, I see this face right here. I was like, yes, I need that one. I um, love the florals, love how big it is. Love the colors. And then what else did we have? What is this down here? This honestly looks like it could be something. I don't know. I don't know anything about Batosi or anything like that. I'm going to have to Google Lens it. I'll put up anything on the screen that I find. 
Okay, so I did find this. It's similar in print. OMC Otagiri Japan. This one's 130. Mine is probably not worth that much because this is a boutique type website, but it was really interesting to find out about this mid-century vase. This was just, I think, um, like pottery or ceramic. If it was brass, I probably would have picked up that little couple. Brass has actually been doing super well in our antique store. This looks like possibly ironwood or metal, those ducks. And I was like, oh, what is that? We have the Pillsbury Doughboy. Um, and then I realized that you could open the case. So I actually did get those geese without having to ask. And then I think I'm in one of the last sections here in the thrift store. I really like this cup a lot. Um, again, it fits in that whole like Chinese-French combined you. look that I really love. The blue and the white. And then we have the shoe box. Will someone please? What does it say? <laughs> Something about the computers and being frustrated with the computers. Oh, do you guys know what this is? This is a flower frog $2.99. I know a lot of people pick them up whenever they see them. People usually like decorating with flowers in there. And then this felt like a like cut crystal antique um, pit, like small pitcher. Um, and I'm doing better at learning about like crystal and stuff. So I was like, okay, this totally looks like it could be a, a, an antique piece. Um, but what I did find out when I was checking out is that it was, it was damaged at the handle. So I did put it back, but then I was like, oh, what are these? Well, um, they're like frosted, I don't know, rosebuds or fish heads or something. I Google lens them and they actually came up as Mikasa. I've actually been really drawn to a lot of Mikasa things as well. I use Mikasa uh, dishes and things for my holiday events. So I really do like the look of a lot of Mikasa pieces. But they just don't really sell that well um, for resale. And look at this. Longer burger. Longer burger. $1.99. Um, <laughs> some kind of separator. But I was like, okay, we'll grab that. I don't find longer burger too often. I think that um, everyone knows about longer burger now. And I mean, I found mugs. But never really baskets. I think um, thrift stores are like they know like okay we're gonna price the longer burger up or like I think Goodwill ships it often to their um, online sales places um, to put on shopgoodwill.com. So yeah that was my insane shopping trip. It took um, like two different cashiers women to ring me up help me with the things to my car it was just a lot. And so I'm really excited to put some of these into my booth. I'm going to put some pictures up on the screen, just showing how I take pictures with the price and with the tag I'm going to be putting um, on the items to put in my booth. But yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And as always, make sure you're out there thrifting so you can live generously. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. A huge shout out to all the Patreon members for supporting both YouTube channels and our Lily Works Facebook community. Come on over to our new selling platform called district.net. We have two stores. One is called Lily Works Antiques and Collectibles. The other is Lily Works Jewels and Lots. Become a member. You can also become a seller. Also, if you're interested in anything you see from this video or reseller merch, go ahead and head over to lilyworksreseller.com where you can find different collections for sale. Also, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later. Bye!